Good afternoon, my dear students. I'm going to deliver a lecture on 100 Avitors Walden Pond. 100 Avitors Walden Pond is prescribed in the sixth semester English major students of Kohati University. I hope this lecture will help our students to conceive an idea about Toro and uh, the new trend of American transcendentalism. Uh, Henry David Toro is recognized as an important contributor to the American literary and philosophical movement known as New England Transcendentalism. His essays, books, and poems wave together two central themes over the course of his intellectual career, nature and the conduct of life. The continuing importance of these two themes is well illustrated by the fact that the last two essays Toru published during his lifetime was The Last Days of John Brown, and the succession of forest trees, which was uh, both was published in 1860. Thoreau's importance as a philosophical writer was little appreciated during his lifetime, but his two most noted works, Walden or Life in the Woods, which was published in 1854. And another one is Civil Disobedience, which was published in 14, uh, 1849. Gradually developed a following and by the later half of the 20th century had become classic text in American thought. Not only have these texts been used widely to address issues in political philosophy, moral theory, and more recently, environmentalism but they have also been of central importance of those who see philosophy as an engagement with ordinary experience and not as an abstract deductive exercise. In this vein, Thoreau's work has been recognized as having foreshadowed central insights of later philosophical movements such as existentialism and pragmatism. Towards the end of his life, Toro's naturalistic interest took a more scientific turn. He pursued a close examination of local fauna and kept detailed records of his observations. David Henry Toro was born in July 12, 1817 in Concord, Massachusetts, to John and Cynthia Dunbar Toro. He had two older siblings, Helen and John, younger sister, Sophia. The family moved to Clamsford in 1818, to Boston in 1822, and back to Concord in again in 1823. Thoreau had two educations in Concord. The first occurred through his explorations of the local environment. It's very interesting thing that he has grown up in an environmental setting as like as William Wordsworth who was also belongs to the Lake District of England with a fine natural setting which were emerged or encouraged by his mother's interest in nature. The second was his preparation at Concord Academy for study at Harvard University. He entered Harvard in 1833 and graduated in 1837. The year he graduated, he began the journal that was the primary source for his lectures and published work throughout his life. At this time too, he inverted his names and began to refer to himself as Henry David. The essay displays both his scientific interest and his transcendentalist vision of the meanings to be found in human encounters with nature. In two essays published in 1843, A Winter Walk 
and a work to was suicide. Toru develops his naturalistic writing in the direction it later took in Walden. Toro walked off and at his father's pencil making business and in 1843 he served for a short time as a tutor for Emerson's brother Edward Sillen on Staten Island, New York. Then in 1845 he built a small cabin near Walden Pond on land that Ralph Waldo Emerson had purchased to preserve its beauty. During his two years stay at the pond, Thoreau completed the manuscripts for A Week on the Concord and a Merrimack Rivers in 1849. It was based on a trip he had taken with his brother John in 1839 and was intended as a memorial to John who had died of Titanus in 1842. Thoreau also of course had the experience that became the basis for Walden and he began writing this work while he was still living in the pond. Also during his sojourn at Walden Pond, Toro spent a night in jail for not having paid his poll tax in protest of slavery. This episode laid the foundation of his another essay, Civil Disobedience. After leaving Walden, Toro spent a year living in Emerson's home helping with handiwork and children while Emerson was lecturing to you. In January 1848, he gave two part lecture at the Concord Lyceum titled The Relations of the Individual to the State. The lecture was published in revised form as Resistance to Civil Government. In Elizabeth Peabody's Aesthetic Papers in May 1849, Thoreau's argument in civil, civil disobedience is sometimes read as a libertarian tract like Emerson's self-reliance. From this point of view, it is considered a defense of rugged individualism, if not anarchy. But such interpretations miss the central transcendentalism of the piece. What both Thoreau and Emerson require is a careful turning to one's moral intuitions or conscience as a guide when confronted by issues of major consequences. Walden is unquestionably Thoreau's major work. He condenses the two years he had actually spent in the cabin into a single year and bond. The central theme of the book is the cultivation of the self. Thoreau has in mind a specific audience, these two have, uh, those who have become disenchanted with their everyday lives, the mass of men who are discontent and idly complaining of the hardness of their lot or of the times. His aim is not to have others intimate his move to Walden, but to have them consider their own possibilities for improving their situations. For overcoming, for overcoming their lives of quiet desperation. To his extent, the book is like a stoic treatise on life. It is, however, replete with irony, humor, and philosophical and literary integrity that make it much more than a straightforward and ceridian. To bring readers to their own awakenings, Thoreau was first raises the question of life's economy. He experiments with living deliberately, paying attention to what he owns and what he owns him, as well as to how he spends his time. An explicit anti-materialism underlies much of the first two chapters. Thoreau does not dogmatically endorse an economic minimalism. However, the experiment in poverty is an attempt to find out what is important in a life. It is, in other words, a way of testing one's life. Uh, 
this is the first part i have given the del a deliberation i hope students will be benefited and immediately i'll i'm, I'm uh, following with the second i'm coming with the second part thank you